Hi, hi everyone. Welcome to Jedi Episode Two. My name is Jimmy, and uh, with me are Ethan and David. Uh, so right now, uh, because we are still a few minutes left to five p.m., so we are we still have time to wait for more people to uh, join us live. So uh, meanwhile, uh, for those of you who tune in to our Facebook Live for the first time, and if you want to know more about us and how we came up with the name Jedi, uh, do check out our first episode in the video section. Yeah. So uh, I'll be the moderator for this episode. So here's how we're going to run through. Uh, we will first address questions from the previous episode on budget planning. Uh, then Ethan and David will be having a fireside chat on expense tracking. Uh, and then there's a bonus section whereby we will share how you can earn 10% cashback on fair price spend. And then last but not least, we will have a Q&A session uh, for the current episode. Yeah. So feel free to post your questions in the comment section and we will address them during the Q&A section. Okay, all right. So now let's move on to the, uh, the the few questions that were raised during the previous episode. So, Ethan. Yeah. Okay. Hi everyone. I'm Ethan here, the founder of Policy Work. So, uh, these are the questions that we got from the last episode that was unanswered, and uh, maybe we let's just proceed with the first question. Uh, this address specifically to David. So maybe David wants to share what's his opinion of uh, property. Uh, buying opportunities, what he thinks of industrial properties, and is he going to buy residential again or not? So, David, up to you. Sure. Hi, I'm David. I'm co-founder of Policy Work. And for this question, uh, it's very important to look at the context. So, generally, for industrial property, people would buy it if uh, they are willing to take higher risks and usually higher risks would also mean higher rewards. Uh, the trend previously was that you want to get minimally 10% yield, rental yield per annum. So this is very important because generally for residential, we're looking at 6 to 8%. So these are the investment property uh, rental yields that is commonly found. Uh, of course, there are also poor yield properties, but for the purpose of this discussion, we will not focus on that. So for industrial property, because there are less buyers, so the market is smaller, hence the risk is slightly higher. And also uh, recently, industrial properties, they have at most 30 years of lease when they start. Uh, Prior to this, there were properties that were have a longer lease period. Uh, so there, there is a buying opportunity for those people who buy more than 30 years properties. And they can also uh, find those that are more than 10% per annum EU. So it's quite hard to find, but uh, that's where uh, property investors would be able to make a good decision when they can find a, a good price and a good yield. Personally, I have not purchased industrial because when I looked at the market during my uh, the time when I purchased, that was five years and three years ago, I, I bought residential properties and at that time I looked at uh, both markets and I thought that residential made more sense for me because I would prefer to get uh, 8% and also get on block value. So uh, when I purchased my properties, I did consider on block potential. I also considered things like how can I improve the property to make it, uh, to enhance the, the yield. So these were my considerations as for whether I'll buy another residential property, um, right now I have two. So if I can get uh, 
a, a buyer, I would sell it at, at a reasonable or good price. And then I can buy one, a, another property. But if I cannot get a seller, uh, if I cannot sell my current properties, I would only buy when it makes sense based on my overall asset allocation. Oh, th thank you, David. So that's for the first question. So let's move on to the second question. Do you guys invest in stocks and shares? So who, who would like to take this first? Uh, maybe I'd like to take this question. Sure. Okay, so for me personally, uh, in the past, I used to invest in uh, individual stocks in the Singapore market. Uh, and then a few years back, uh, because there is a rise of uh, these robot advisors and digital advisors uh, that allows one to uh, start invest passively in uh, multiple stocks and government bonds. Yeah, so I like the idea. So I started to uh, invest in many stocks, many government bonds uh, via a robot advisor and a digital advisor. Uh, so this advisors allows me to stay invested passively for the long term uh, towards my own goals. Okay, so personally, I have a cash investing account with Auto Wealth and a CPF investing account with Endowers. Okay, what about you, Ethan? Oh, okay. Uh, for me, yeah, I'm actually like you, uh, Jimmy. Uh, initially, when there was no robo advisors, uh. I actually read about personal finance and uh, unit trust doesn't seem appealing to me, uh, basically. So I started to buy a few stocks. Uh, currently, I sold all my stocks already because I start a policy mode. Uh, so we need capital. Uh. Yeah, so most of my money is now in a policy work, which is also correlated to stock and shares uh, because we are dealing with endowments and they are actually smoother returns from the stock market. But personally, I do have P2P. I do have crypto, which is in a very small percentage because uh, although they are very high yielding, their risk is all very high. Yeah, so I prefer more conservative uh, investments. Uh, more for, moving on to David, maybe you want to share more? Sure, sure. Uh, for me, when I, after I started working and I started to invest, I did, buy some single country unit trust. Um, at the time, it was just after a financial crisis. So I was just uh, buying in from from the bottom. I, I kept on buying until I think it was one or two years time. Then I decided to cash out. And that allowed me to build up my initial capital. Uh, right now, I'm not into stocks and shares. The only things that I buy uh, would be unit trust, but that is purely to fulfill the DBS multiplier criteria. I don't consider myself as a stocks and shares investor because it's less than 1% of my net asset. Right now, my money goes to paying off uh, the mortgage. So I would consider that as my current investment. Uh, but good news is for this year, because mortgage is deferred, so I am not paying anything for the rest of the year. Um, this also means that I have the time to accumulate funds for my watches. Mm. So will you still be investing in stocks and shares using watches or yeah? Well, that really depends on how far we drop from here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so maybe, uh, is it 5 p.m. already? Yeah, I think yeah. that's uh, move on. It's, it's past 5. Yeah, so uh, for those of you who just tune in, uh, don't worry. Uh, we have not uh, started the fireside chat because uh, we were previously be addressing questions that were raised from the previous episode. All right. So with that, uh, for those who tune in, just tune in. Um, so welcome. Uh, if you have not uh, 
watch our previous episode, uh, please do so because uh, in the previous episode, we share more about ourselves, what we do, and how we came up with the name Jedi, right? So now let's move on to the fireside chat on the expense tracking. Uh, I shall let the ball rolling, Ethan. Okay, sure. So I'll just cover the four points as stated, uh, why we track expenses, understand your wants and needs, your actual expenses, and our process of tracking expenses. Okay, so why do we track expenses? Uh, you can see uh, from our previous uh, episode, we talked about budgeting. So you budget, so you must track your work. Uh, so you track your expenses. So it actually uh, allows you to have effective budgeting and spending. So when you spend, you spending is the amount that you spend. Budgeting is just setting aside. So with that, you are able to identify cash leakage. And this will definitely help you in uh, understanding your personal finance, how you are uh, moving your money, how's your cash flow. Yeah. So there are actually a lot of common issues on tracking. Uh, people will keep thinking that it's tedious. Uh, there's a lot of mental load like, hey, uh, I spent $3 really, I must key in, in my Excel file or, or what. Uh. Then uh, if you forget or you are you know when you're working uh, sometimes you well, cannot you must really go to work already so you will forget to track also then even if you keep your receipts uh, sometimes you just throw the receipts away you got no time to keep them and uh, you feel that uh, yeah, what's the point of tracking right so we also face the same issue definitely but uh, we found a few ways to help solve these issues so one is you can use common items that you usually use. So let's say if you are always using Google Calendar, you can actually track, okay, how much I spend, just make a note. It's a very fast one. Or even use technology. You can use your phone camera, take a snapshot of the receipt, or just take a snapshot of how much you spend. Then uh, you can actually code it later. Or like me, you can even uh, have card wallets for each spending. So for example, I have GrabPay. I always use GrabPay to track it. And uh, the tracking is always consolidated at the end of the month. And when you post it, you can actually see where your money goes to. It, you definitely need a bit more time when you're sorting it out. But in that sense, it helps you to see what is your actual spending at the end of the month. So now we move on to understand your wants and needs. So just being a very uh, beginner's way of uh, relation to others. Okay, needs are just things that you must have, if not, you cannot function at all. Once is are things that you can function even without it. So it, to me, it's bubble tea as a one, but to some people, coffee is a need. No coffee, you cannot work. You know? Yeah, so it's actually up to you to decide what is your needs and wants. But more importantly, uh, once is really a lot more about luxuries. Uh. So let's move on. So now is to understand your actual expenses. Okay, for us, we categorize uh, our actual expenses in this order. Uh, number one is groceries, uh, the things that you buy from supermarket, uh, f and which is your daily food expenses, your transport, it can be Grab, uh, Comfort, Delco, or even public transport, and the rest in others. Uh, why we group it this way? Because we feel that the first three are really your needs. Uh you must have them. Without groceries, without f &B, without transport, you cannot do anything like uh, But the others is more of you can do with, you can do without. Okay, so let's uh, move on to our process of tracking. Okay, this is actually our expense tracking method. So maybe David want to start with his uh, methods first. Sure, so everyone in my household will be in a WhatsApp group and we document everything that we spend on so at the end of the month i will sort them out to see what are the things that we spend more on what do we spend less on and so that when we move forward into the next month we know we have a mental note in mind what we should be doing okay so for for me actually i base it on the budget that i did previously so I'll most of the time segregate my users into different card use. And then for those uh, insurance and uh, others mercedes spending that is hard to earn cash back, I think uh, a lot of us know insurance, you really cannot earn much cash back. So I'll try to find the best way or the card to use it to pay off. 
through Kaga or maybe IPMY. And uh, for those that is easy to rack up expenses like your FMB, your utilities bill, uh, I'll try to reserve them for the cashback card that gives the highest cashback uh, in this case. So that is how I do my expense tracking. Yeah, so let's take a look at our monthly expenses. Yeah, so maybe David want to start first. Okay, so for me, you notice that for January, February and April, my expense per adult is about 1,500. Mm -hmm. uh, it's much reduced in March, uh, mainly because uh, I have a three month quarterly um, tracking system. So if I spend more in January and February, I'll try to spend less in March, uh, mainly because I'm trying to clock some uh, expense requirement in January and February so that I don't, I will not clock it in March because it only makes sense to maximize your uh, expense per month. If you cannot clock it, then don't try to chase it. If you can clock it or if you can push it uh, forward or, or, or backwards, then, then do that. So for March, my, uh, you, you also notice that my February and March, the expenses for most of my categories are similar. It's only the others that change a lot. So these others would be things like um, things that I might spend now rather than next time, or I can push it to next time. So I'm guessing for February, I push forward my utility bills, my telecommunication bills, so that I don't have to pay for it in March. As for April, you notice that my groceries went up a lot by about <laughs> double. And this is mainly because I spent uh, money buying NQC fair price gift cards and vouchers. So if you take all those away, because I haven't used up all those vouchers and gift cards yet, then my actual expense in April is uh, much lower. I would say it's around five hundred dollars in in April. Mm. So uh, this is the a side effect of the the COVID situation, where because we don't go out much, so there's really very little things to spend on. Yeah. Oh, so so you don't do online delivery or like Red Mart that kind. Of uh, I do, I do. And that's under 500. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that, that's interesting. Uh, so anything to add, David? Uh, no. That, okay, that's it for so now. I'll share my expenses. So you can see uh, for, for me in January, February, March, uh, I'm very low spender. I'm a minimalistic. So even my groceries in January, uh, it, it spent way low is because at the previous uh, last year, I actually bought a lot of groceries already. So normally we try to stock up because of the COVID-19 also. Uh, <laughs> you definitely stock up with it. Yeah. Then uh, along the way, uh, in February and March, you can see that uh, my grocery spend start to go back out again. That, that's where I had a lot of uh, different spending. Uh, my FMB uh, dropped mainly because I'm using a uh, grab points just to eat. So I, I'm literally eating for free. I can look at it in this way. Yeah, but there's uh, a lot of uh, transport because I do a lot of uh, meetings during that time before COVID-19. And uh, you can see between March and April, my grocery spend went up slightly. My f and went up a lot. So it's actually due to because uh, working from home, we tend to call a lot more delivery back to home to eat. Eh? Yeah, so that, that's why there's a big difference uh, in the spending. So let's uh, move on to the next uh, credit card spend in April. Yeah, so maybe they really want to start with his uh, May bank. Yeah. Okay, sure. So for me, I only put three credit cards here. I actually have quite a few. Um, I only want to highlight these three because these are my favorite cards. Um, I also have the MCO card and I also use the GrabPay. So I maximize, I try to maximize as much as I can. So for me, bank, families and friends, to me, it's a very uh, 
special card because it gives 8% uh, up to $80 per month. So you can spend $800 to $1,000 on anything that is on groceries or telecommunications uh, and restaurants. popular Yamaha. Oh yeah, restaurants too and even fast food restaurants. So it's very, very versatile. And for Live Fresh, I tried to clock $400 on online expense and $400 on uh, pay wave expense. So sometimes, uh, like right now, it's the mid of the month. I realized mm -hmm. that I have uh, clocked up my Live Fresh $400. So whatever that I need to spend on online, I will have to move it to my other cards like GrabPay or uh, my advanced mm -hmm. card. And for example, my telecommunications. Uh, because I pay for my Singtel bill using the website, so I mm -hmm. clock it under the online spend for Live Fresh, and it's quite easy to 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 clock Singtel because my family uses Singtel, so we have a few lines, and it's quite easy to 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 clock that. The pay mm -hmm. now. The, the pay wave part is a bit more tricky because uh, I don't really pay wave that often. So mm. clocking the $200 to $400 is a bit more tricky. Sometimes I'll, I'll use the uh, groceries. When I buy groceries, mm. I'll use my Live Fresh card to pay for them because my May Bank has already maxed out. Mm. So next will be my HSBC Advance card. Uh, because yes. I'm a HSBC Advance account holder and I can clock more than $2,000 per month. So I get 3.5% cashback on all qualified spends. Uh, this includes any cut up transactions. Um, and in a sense, cut up allows you to pay for pretty much any... the, the more interesting uh, items like insurance, um, even rent, mm. and uh, well, in even income tax. So there are mm. a lot of ways to to get the cash back from from this card. I understand. Okay, so for me, uh, my main card spend will be in GrabPay. Uh, I think everyone knows about UOB One Card. Uh, before 16 March, uh, there's this uh, opportunity to top up 2000 every month. So basically, I really top up a lot into GrabPay. <laughs> so I'm using a lot into GrabPay uh, for now. And I recently found something else, uh, the MCO card. Uh, I think we will talk about this in the next slide. How about that? <laughs> because it's supposed to be reserved for the later one. Uh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, sure, so sure, sure. Yep. So this is the bonus. Yeah. How to get 10 to 13% cashback on your NTUC fair price spend. Yeah, so maybe David wants to share his way first. Okay, sure. Um, the way that I've been using so far is uh, using Singtel Dash app. So this uh, Singtel Dash app I can top up $200 per month from my Singtel bill to pay for my Singtel Dash. And then I use this Singtel Dash to buy a $50 gift card or vouchers uh, every month from, from NTC FairPrice. And Singtel Dash would give me 5% uh, cashback. And then when I pay for my Singtel bill using my Maybank, uh, friend, family and friends card, I get another 8% cashback. So that's 13%. Alternatively, if I use my VBS Live Fresh card to pay for this Singtel bill, then I would get 5% cashback because it's an online spend because I pay for it using the website or the Singtel app. So it's either 5% plus 5% or 8% plus 
And prior to this month, uh, there was a time when it was every week. You could just buy $50 vouchers or gift card every week. And that allowed me to clear off most of my $200 top up uh, every month. Mm -hmm. But now oh, with this continue to change, with this change in the period, right? So you only use fifty dollars per month. Uh, I don't know whether they would continue this next month. We'll see because normally they release the news near the end of the month whether they want to continue or not. Uh, if they do, then good. If not, then I'll have to figure out how to use this dash uh, credits. Uh, one good way I I found is that for Shopee, right? There's a particular day when if you spend $60 using a Singtel Dash account, you can get uh, $5 off on top of whatever uh, existing discount vouchers that Shopee allows you to have. Mm. And that I, happens I thought you would every consider... week. Mm -hmm. I, I thought you would consider maybe uh, buying from... Uh... Sing Chong because he also qualifies for five percent, I think. Uh yeah, yeah, you could. You could. Yeah, but so that, that's why I rarely shop at Sing Chong because my place no Sing Chong. Oh <laughs> what about Giant? My place also no Giant. Ayo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So for, for me, it's more about uh, MCO card. Uh, very recently, MCO actually announced that uh, there's ten percent cashback on FairPrice, on Sheng on on uh, Grab, on Foodpanda. Yeah, so that is where I use uh, my MCO Visa card. I top up uh, credits into it, then I use it to spend on uh, Grab food, uh, Foodpanda, and uh, NTUC. So that's a uh, your 10% rebate in MCO coin. And this MCO coin, why is it good? Is because you can sell it almost immediately to get back the cash. Eh? So that's where I get my 10% cash back from NTUC. Okay, so we are coming to the end of the fireside chat. Yeah, so maybe Jimmy, uh, do we have, have any Q&A from the okay. viewers? Okay, thank you, Ethan and David, for the fireside chat. Uh, we hope you find it valuable for your own expense tracking and new ways to earn cashback from fair price spend. Uh, we are now go for the Q and A section. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comment section. Uh, we are now going through them. So I have one question. Um, is regarding this. Uh, okay. Uh, he said something like, uh, made for Maybank, there is a new revision in the terms and conditions for restaurant spend. Um, any ideas, David? Uh, usually they will look at the MCC code for uh, restaurants. So if you're talking about Maybank, um, they would include all restaurants and even fast food restaurants, uh, they do not include hotel restaurants because hotel restaurants, they are considered as hotel expenses. So you have to be very careful when you spend in hotel restaurants. Um, for Maybank, the most updated MCC code was 4814 plus Food Panda plus Deliveroo. So as long as your MCC code is under 4814, it's fine. And that includes all restaurants and, and fast food restaurants. So what about uh, maybe something like Lola's Cafe or those other uh, small cafes that you see? Were, were they included or not as uh, under 4584 or something? Uh, the thing about these other cafes, right, is that mm. it really depends on what they are classified under when they when they apply for these uh, machines. So if you are unclear, right, the best way is to just use a general expense card like uh, the HSBC Advance 
or even the standard chartered Manhattan or even the standard chartered unlimited. Uh, anything that is safe that is safe, then you use for your main bank card. So for me, if it's uncertain, right, I'll I'll just put it into a general expense card. Yeah, mm. I I rather get uh three percent instead of eight percent if I'm not sure, because to me I know that most of this is eight percent. I'll be getting it anyway. So that's a form of risk management for your side, lah. So general spending definitely uh, use general spending card. Restaurant, yeah, unsure, just use general spending card. So that is strategy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah,、uh, of course. Sometimes I'm. I just want to test. I will do a test spend to see whether um this this transaction is qualified spend. Like right now, I'm trying to test whether the MCO. Can be considered as a qualified spend in this standard chartered unlimited card. It's not、uh, stated very clearly in the terms and conditions, but I'm trying it out. Okay. 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 Right. Thank you, David. Ah,、uh, so there is another questions. Ah,、uh, ah,、uh, where can I get grocery vouchers? Ah,、uh, we Ethan or David can answer. Yeah, maybe David. Yes. Ah,、uh, okay. For me, I、mm. only buy vouchers from NTUC Fair Price. Um, first、mm -hmm. of the Singtel Dash promotion. Um, I have, I don't remember buying cold storage vouchers. Yeah, but I think you can because there was a time I I received. Like a few hundred dollars of cold storage vouchers, under the dairy farm, uh, group brand, and it can be used in Giant also.、Mm. Yeah, I I I do buy these vouchers to uh to reach my required spending. Like for example, if let's say for Maybank, uh, the fan family and friends card. If I have only spent six hundred dollars and I'm very sure I cannot spend the next two hundred in order to hit the eight hundred minimum, I'll just go to NTC Fair Price, buy two hundred dollars of vouchers, and and then I'll try to、uh, spend the rest of the two hundred dollars as per normal as required. I don't spend unless I have to. So to me, this two hundred dollars is more like a I I spend it in advance. So that、uh, I can get eight percent of everything that I've already spent on. So have you have a? Ah,、uh, Ethan. Ah,、uh, okay. For for me, ah,、uh, yeah, I also buy NTUC vouchers. Ah,、uh, I remember if you are a member with maybe Safra or some other memberships, they do have ah、uh, all these ah、uh, grocery vouchers also as a member where you can buy cheap. Oh yeah, but it's very limited, right? It's just like it's very limited offer. You can't you can't consistently buy it. Yes, correct. So that's why、uh, using Grab Pay as a multi-purpose card,、uh, yeah, I, I love it lah. It costs can pay almost everything. Yeah, me too. Me too. I I also max it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else? Was the question asking about how you can buy the voucher or where where can you, where 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 when、uh. you go to NTUC Fair Price, just go to the customer service and ask them. Oh, they they will sell it to you.、Mm. Uh, or if you are trying to buy the gift card, just go to any of the of the queues and then just ask them for the gift card and ask them to top up, maybe two hundred dollars or three hundred dollars up to you. I think minimum is fifty fifty dollars. Yeah. I I remember for NTUC gift vouchers ah,、uh, that that one maybe a minimum of ten or twenty dollars ah,、uh, if I remember correctly. Oh, the vouchers ah,、uh, vouchers. The lowest denomination is five dollars. Yes, yes. But I've never purchased so little lah. <laughs> hmm. Okay. okay. So in this case, if I 
put it like my money in the bank and put it in the voucher, what is more worth uh, actually? Uh, the thing about voucher <laughs> is that you get 5% per month. 5% of per spend. If you use Intel Dash, 5% off per transaction. Mm. Um, because I've been accumulating NTC uh, vouchers and gift cards. So technically, all my NTC fair price spend is a blend of 10 to 13%. So if you, I don't think you can find any bank that will give you more than 4% per annum interest. Mm, so it's actually a good way to be efficient about your money uh, in this case, although it's on a credit. So let's say even if you push it to next year, you push it to next year, your 10% drops to 5% because it's two years. Uh. It is still better? Mm, yeah, it is. It is It is still better because 10% is still more than double or 4%. Mm. But you have to be careful about your vouchers expiring. Uh. Because uh, nowadays, uh, it's better to go for gift cards than vouchers. If you have vouchers that are expiring, just go to NTC and buy the gift card with your voucher. Then there's no expiry date. Oh, so you share another hack. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. I, I didn't think that was hack, but sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, we are reaching 5.30 already, I think. Okay, Jimmy. Uh, all right. So looks like there's no more questions. Okay. Uh, we have come to the end of this episode. Uh, thank you for tuning in and all the questions you have for us. Uh, so I have just provided a link um, where it will direct you to a account opening page whereby um, if you want to open a Sintel Dash account or a crypto.com account, you can open an account via that link that I give you. And plus, uh, remember earlier, I when I answer a question, uh, I mentioned about passive investing uh, using uh, auto wealth and endowers. I also provide the links to open an account via the link that I provided. Okay, so uh, with that, uh, if you still have questions with regards to the expense tracking and the cashback earned from fair price spend, uh, you can still post your questions in the comment section and we will address them during our next episode. Speaking of the next episode, uh, join us next Friday, 5 p.m. for Jedi episode three on asset allocation. If you mm -hmm. like our content, and be notified for future episodes. Do like our page and share this post. We will see you next Friday. And may the, may finances, the finances, finances be with you. you. Okay, goodbye.